Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. A while ago I launched my two free complete courses. One is targeted at complete beginners on learning how to make a game in Unity starting completely from scratch, and the second one starts from where that first one left off and is on converting that game into multiplayer. The project starts completely from scratch and goes step by step, lecture by lecture, until the final published game. So here is a quick overview of everything done during those two courses. So first of all, we're going to start completely from scratch by selecting a Unity version and creating a brand new project. With that new project, we will then learn all about the basics of the Unity interface and set up a layout. Then the other important part is Visual Studio, which is where we're going to be writing all of our code. After that comes an extremely important lecture all about coding style and naming rules. Like I said, the code in this course is on the same level of quality as my Steam games, so having proper naming rules and good code style is paramount. Next, we're going to download and import all the assets that we're going to use in the course. Everything is included, so you can follow along with every step of the way. With the assets imported, we're going to set up some quick post-processing just to make the game look good. Then, for our first piece of logic, we're going to make a simple character controller. With that logic working, we will then implement a proper character visual with the included assets. Next, we're going to learn the basics of animation and the animator component. And with that, we're going to make our player really come alive with some simple but really nice animations. Then we're going to install the Sin package. This isn't actually used too much in this course, but I still wanted to include it because it is such a useful tool, so I do want you to know about it. After that comes another extremely, extremely important lecture with regards to writing some good clean code. We're going to do a nice refactor to replace the legacy input manager with the brand new input system. Learning how to refactor is an extremely important and very valuable skill that will massively improve the quality of your code. With that then, we're going to implement some nice collision detection to make sure our character doesn't walk through walls. Next, we're going to create the very first kitchen counter and make a script to handle how to interact with it. Then we're going to learn all about c -sharp events and create a proper interact input. Next, we're going to build a selected counter visual, which will require us to learn about the extremely useful singleton pattern. With the counters working, we're going to start working on the kitchen objects themselves. So these are going to be the ingredients and the plates. We're going to use scriptable objects to define all of the types. Then a very important part of our design is each kitchen object will have to be placed somewhere. So we're going to take some time to really think about the best way to achieve that, all while writing some good clean code. Next, we're going to enable the player to pick up an object. In doing so, we're going to learn about c -sharp interfaces. Then we're going to make a container counter. This is from where we can spawn new objects. With that, we will enable the player to pick up objects and drop them anywhere where there's space. Then we're going to make the cutting counter. This one enables the player to cut an ingredient into slices. So to do that, we're going to make an alternate interact action. And for handling the cutting, we're going to once again use script mall objects to define a proper cutting recipe. Then we're going to learn about a really awesome Unity feature, World Canvases, and use that to display a nice progress bar for our cutting progress. After that is a quick lecture, just going to make a very useful generic script to make any object look at the camera. Next, for another counter, we're going to build a trash bin. This is where the player can drop objects to destroy them. Then the stove counter. This one is going to be quite a bit complex. We're going to create recipes for cooking and for burning. We're going to learn how to make a basic state machine and handle timers. Next, we're going to make the plates counter. This is a simple counter that just spawns a bunch of plates. After that, we're going to make some custom logic on the plate to be able to hold other objects. With that logic working, we're going to build a complete visual for all the objects that can exist on the plate. Then make a nice UI element on the plate itself to showcase the icons of what exactly is on that plate. Afterwards, we're going to make the very last counter, the delivery counter. This is where we drop the completed plates. And in this lecture, we're also going to learn about the Unity shader graph and make a quick, simple custom shader. Then we're going to build the delivery manager class that generates the recipes that the customers are requesting. Next, we're going to build a UI to showcase the waiting recipes. After that comes something pretty crucial. We're going to add some music and then add some sound effects for all kinds of game actions. With that, the game will be almost done, so next we're going to build a proper game start and a game end. Then make a simple main menu and handle scene loading. After that, handle creating a basic pause window. Then make an options menu, enable the player to modify the audio levels and rebind keys. After that, we're going to enable menu navigation with a controller. And in the end, as usual, comes the polish stage. 
So we're going to add all kinds of small tweaks and effects to make the game feel really great. Like I've said many times, polish is what separates good games from great games. After all of that, we will have our final completed single player game. Then for the multiplayer course. So first we will begin by taking a brief look at the starting game. This is what was made completely from scratch in the single player course. So here we're just going to do a quick overview as a refresher to see how all the code is set up. Then we're going to begin by installing netcode for game objects. This is Unity's official multiplayer solution. We're going to install the package and do the basic setup with all of the settings and spawn a player object. After that, we're going to begin by synchronizing the player movement. And also at this point, we're going to talk about one extremely important thing in multiplayer games, which is server authoritative versus client authoritative. With the movement synced, we are then going to synchronize the animations. This one is pretty simple to do thanks to the built-in components. Next, we're going to synchronize our first proper gameplay logic. We're going to begin with the delivery manager. So we're going to synchronize how the recipes are spawned, make sure only the server spawns them and all the clients see the same list, and also synchronize delivering the recipes either correctly or incorrectly. After that is just a quick lecture to fix the selected counter visual. This is something that showcases one of the many differences between making single player games and multiplayer games. We need to think in different ways, especially because in multiplayer we no longer have just a single player object. Then we're going to synchronize picking up objects. This involves learning how to spawn objects on the network so that all of the players can see it. After learning how to spawn them, we're going to synchronize the kitchen object parent so that multiple players can hold objects and everything is correctly synchronized across the network. Then we're going to synchronize the plates counter, make it so that only the server spawns plates. Then for the trash counter, this one involves learning how to destroy network objects. After that is synchronizing the cutting counter, so this one will involve thinking about what parts we need to synchronize and what logic can be just local. Then for the stove counter, for this one instead of using RPCs, we're actually going to use a network variable. The server will keep track of the stove state and sync it to the clients. Next is synchronizing the logic for adding ingredients onto the plates. After that, for an optional design question, we're going to implement some player collisions. Then we're going to synchronize the complete game state. So waiting for all of the players to be ready before starting the game and also synchronize the game timer and game over. Next, we're going to learn how to deal with pausing. So do we allow it or not? In this case, we are going to allow it and all of the other players must wait until everyone is unpaused. Then for something very important, which is how do we handle disconnects? How do we clean up all the objects so the game doesn't crash when a player leaves in the middle? Related to that are late joins, so how do we handle a player that joined after the game has already started, or should we even allow that? Then comes a really important and relatively complex lecture. In this one we're going to handle the complete connection scene flow, how we begin in the main menu in single player, then we have an online lobby, after that we create the netcode connection and go into the character select scene, then when all the players are ready, we then go into the main game scene, and after that just play the game as normal. This is one of the most important lectures in this entire course. After that, with the connection flow working, we're going to build out a nice character select scene. This is one of the main things that I saw people ask about in my netcode video, so we're going to make a nice scene where the players can join and customize their character. Next, we're going to build the game lobby, so the player can create a lobby or join one. Then we're going to implement Relay in order to allow our players to connect to one another easily without having to open ports. Next, we're going to talk about some more Unity multiplayer tools, dedicated servers with game server hosting, matchmaker and vvox. After that, we're going to talk a bit about all of the tools at your disposal to test your multiplayer games. Then, just before the end, we're also going to add a really important option. We want the game to work in both multiplayer and single player. So we're going to make it so you can basically bypass all of the multiplayer connections and play in an offline single player mode. And with that, everything is done, so we're going to inspect the final game and have some fun. So as you can see, you will learn about a ton of topics by following these two courses. If all you want is just to learn how to make single player games and you can just watch that first course, but still, if you get to the end of that one, I would encourage you to follow the multiplayer course simply to gain more knowledge and really solidify all those clean code principles. The single player course is about 10 hours and the multiplayer one is about 7. If you go through both of them, you will gain a ton of knowledge. The response to both these courses has been really positive, so I'm very happy with the results. If you find the course is helpful, there's an optional paid ad free version. But there's really nothing different in that version. There's nothing behind a paywall, so everything here, all the lectures, all the project files, all of it is completely free. So only pick up the optional paid version if you find the course helpful and if you can afford it. Beyond that, if you've already seen my two free courses, you can check out my other ones. I just recently released the fourth free update to my Ultimate Unity Overview course, which now contains over 16 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. 
Then if you enjoy the focus on clean con principles, then a great follow-up is the turn-based strategy course. Alternatively, maybe look into visual scripting or learn how to make a Builder Defender game. So if you want to learn how to make games or improve your already existing skills, then check those out. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.